friend Glory and um, she's asked me to bring her some cream, which she stresses me out to do all the time. Um, so in here I'm mixing some shea butter. Um, I'm going to put in olive oil, just normal cooking olive oil, coconut oil. I'm also going to put tea tree oil and I'll be putting in avocado oil. Now don't ask me what all these things do. Um, I've read about it online and apparently a lot of it is good for your body. It helps seal in moisture and um, you know, it's, all, it's also really good if you have very, very dry skin as well. Now shea butter can smell a little bit. So that's why I'm going to mix in some of these things and they kind of make it smell a little bit better and softer as well. Um, as I said, don't ask me the technicalities of it. I'm not a cosmetologist in any way. But um, I'm just being a dutiful friend. She's probably going to finish this in like a week and a half. And she'll be like, one of my skin is itching me, please, I need cream. Yeah, that's probably what's going to happen. So it's all gone. So I met Glory in, I think it was 2010, I think. Because I moved back to Nigeria in 2009. I think in 2010, she was writing on Bella Ninja, and I used to write on Bella Ninja as well. So we both used to read each other's articles and stories. And somehow, I think it was just like, she, I, I think she actually reached out to me first. So she was like, oh, hey, how are you doing? She reached out to me on Facebook, and um, I don't know who added who, I can't remember. Maybe I did add her first, or she did, I can't remember. But anyway, that was the time when, you know, Facebook chats were still on, where we had time to chat on Facebook. So we kind of just started chatting on Facebook, and it was like, oh, I read your article, I really liked it. I was like, oh, yeah, I read your articles too. So we're kind of mutual admirers of each other's writing. And then that was how it was. And then we were just kind of like, oh, hey, you know, we started just gisting, catching up, what have you been up to, and all this sort of stuff. And I think we eventually sort of f saw each other at some events. That was the first time we saw each other in person. So like, hey, what's up, how are you doing? And I think after that, we swapped numbers that day. And then we, we hung out, we had lunch first. And that was kind of where our friendship started. I'm never very open with you know newer friendships um there's always still a kind of distance but it was just this weird thing that we just kind of connected instantly i don't know how it happened that's, that's how we became friends so she always calls me the girl to her oprah yeah glory is glory clearly has to be the oprah <laughs> but, but i'm okay being the girl so yeah oh, we kept incredibly close i know in a couple of years now since 2010 and we're still friends yeah, but I think it is writing that brought us together. Actually, Bella and Jeb brought us together. There we go. <sighs> Makeup, burdens and expectations. So Glory is one of those very pure spirited people I, I kind of like to see. She thinks everybody is wonderful and everybody is nice. She always wants to help. Um, and a lot of the time it kind of backfires because she takes on a lot more than she can chew. We both suffer from one disease though, together, which is we're ideas people. So our brain is just constantly flooded with ideas 24 seven. She has a PhD and she can be a little bit naive. And because of that, um, you just almost feel like, oh, this little innocent lamb in this big bad world, you know, and there are wolves about to tear her into pieces. So you just want to go, you know, you need to be careful about this thing. Don't get too excited about this thing. You know, manage your expectations. You always kind of want to be that person's just hold and just calm her down. That's my glory in a nutshell. Glory has this skin condition called psoriasis. It affects her pretty much from her head to her feet, to her nails. The skin flakes, it itches a lot. It bruises sometimes, it breaks open sometimes. It's very uncomfortable. I've had times that people say, oh, your friend, what's wrong with her? What's wrong with her skin? And like, you have to kind of explain it. And I think everybody knows that, you know, nobody likes to ex ex explain who they are or things about themselves to other people. But sometimes you, you feel like you have to, because that's the only way you can educate somebody else about it. Let's make sure you're wearing clothes. <laughs> You bought up. <laughs> you you bought up for this. You're so sad. Uh -uh. I bought up and I came out. Are you going to your room? Oh my gosh. <laughs> this is hilarious. I didn't wear my crown. Oh my gosh. My crown. It's a dry cleaner. Chase, see what I told you guys. Why I told you that she's a princess? Not believe me. 
I'm a, I'm a princess not in... Well, actually, I'm a princess, really. She's a princess? Really, in real life, I am a princess. No, not um, like that. What do you mean? I am a princess, like, literally. Whatever. My bloodline is <laughs> royal. Royalty. But in her mind. In her mind. <laughs> in the car, yeah? Mm. There was no light, so mm. I couldn't wear makeup in the house. Okay. So I now wear makeup in the car, and I was just like, why am I wearing makeup to Glory's house? Mm. I just thought it was very interesting, that whole idea of... You know, it, because the camera is in my face, yes, and sir. then I have to. Girl, you're in Nigeria. I have to. Uh, <laughs> I have to I have, gotta. No, but you know me. I was looking at it from a very philosophical perspective. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. Seriously, because yeah. even me, I was thinking about it. I was like, okay, you know, maybe I should do like put my wig on yeah. and everything, and then and I now said to myself, I said, ah, but you know, that kind of defeats the purpose of what we're trying to, to achieve exactly. and everything. And I said, okay, but maybe I cannot do a big reveal. Yeah. Remove the wig. <laughs> I'm like, well, this is not Jerry Springer. No, not really. So maybe I shouldn't do that. Mm. So yeah. So yeah, no, it was just interesting because I was just like, ah, what, 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 why are you putting foundation to go to Glory's house? Mm. And at least I know where I am, so it was okay. But yeah, I was just kind of thinking of the whole thing of like, you know, beauty and expectation. And That's actually what I'm thinking about because mm. um, I was saying how, you know, beauty is so external. Mm. People always see, and then having like, having psoriasis. Yeah. I was thinking about when I was sharing today, I was thinking about how it has made me value myself more. In okay. A, like actually look deeper to yeah. see who I am and love myself yeah. for me. Mm. And I think it was only this year I started making a conscious effort to actually wear makeup. If you notice, mm. I wear more makeup now. Yeah. Before, I wouldn't wear makeup to work. Mm. But then now, I think, it's funny, but I get, but more, I, but I get I, more respect now that yeah, I wear no, makeup. But, no, but here's the thing. I think what it is, is it's a reclamation. So you're wearing makeup with a different intention. Tense. Yes, yes, yes. Do you get so Before you were wearing it, me. yes. Before yes. you were wearing it to cover something. Mm -hmm. And then you had to like, sort of, it's like you strip off mm. to find yourself. And mm. then you find yourself, and when you wear it, it's like, actually, I just want to look this way. Exactly. Yeah. So, um, speaking of psoriasis now, mm. the first, what were the first like sort of symptoms and how old were you? I was, I think I was 20, I want to say 22, 23. Mm. And, oh God, it's been 10 years. <laughs> you old. Yes, <laughs> wow. Damn, cut that part out. <laughs> no, no. Okay, no. So I was, I was literally, nothing was going, okay, no, I should start back when I was mm. in secondary school. Okay. I used to have really long hair and mm. I used to have so, really bad dandruff. Mm. And, you know, it would form like big clumps, clumps mm. on my scalp. And if I peeled it, my scalp would bleed. Mm. So at one point, I remember my, my dad was like, you have to cut your hair because it started, mm. I started having, I think got infected. Yeah. And I started having boils on my Ooh, scalp. Yeah. So my dad was like, I have to cut my hair. And I remember it an a, a traumatic <laughs> Episode, you know, they cut the hair. My dad packed the hair in the bag. We went home. I was crying. My was serious. Me was serious. My dad blessed his heart. He was so patient with me. Anyway, so that was that. And then the hair grew back, and mm. it grew back with the thing on my scalp. So I think everyone realized that okay, perhaps it's not, yeah. yeah. And it will come and go, come and go. Anyway, so fast forward. I had very lovely skin. I mean, to the extent that I would go into a shop, mm. and girls would stop me to find out what was in my basket so that they could buy the same mm. cream. And then was that just because you were yellow as well? I know I was yellow. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> I have, I'll show you one of my past, my old passports. Yeah. If you have seen me, no makeup, just uh, eyebrow, pencil. I, eyebrow pencil on my uh, eyebrows, and mm. that was it. Anyway, so uh, I was sleeping one day, mm. and my skin was really itchy, and I was like, oh, "What's going on?" And then. Um, I got up and I thought maybe there were ants on my bed or something like now that. This so was like 25. Yes, yeah. yeah. That means you were you, investing. Yeah, I had finished my first degree. I was mm. now doing my master's. Okay. And so you were in, you were in England. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, I was in England and I dusted my bed and mm. I went back to bed. Um, sorry, I should say before that actually, I had mm. like a little, like a little circular thing on my thigh, mm. and the doctor had said, oh, it's psoriasis, and he had given me like this ointment to just put on it. Mm. But, but I didn't just think it was like, anything serious. Yeah. Anyway, so rashes like my arms, my back, mm. like my whole body. So it's like, I was this, you know? And it's not like I slept without light. I was in England. Mm -hmm. Like you say, it's heat rash. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I like a, crock, crock, exactly, you know, what is this and everything? Mm. And then in like a couple of days, the rashes had started joining together mm. and they were forming like big blisters yeah. on top to the extent that you could peel the skin off, mm -hmm. you know? And I remember bathing used to be so excruciating because you remember, you're looking at your skin, mm -hmm. You are disgusted by what you are seeing. Yeah. Because you literally, you are, and you're having to touch it. And did it, it smell? Itched. Did it smell? It didn't smell, but it itched, and it was uncomfortable, and, you know, you would wear clothes, and you, you go like this, and your skin is bumpy, mm. you know? So I remember one of my, my like, an uncle in mm. London, 
<coughs> and I said, oh, he told me his wife was a doctor, and they were like, they were both like, this is psoriasis, but let's go see the doctor. Yeah. And the doctor was like, wow, that this is psoriasis, and it's a really bad case of it, this, that, and the other. So put me on medication mm -hmm. and all of that and everything. So that was, yeah. So that was how the psoriasis journey started. And then the one on my scalp, mm -hmm. now even it's double pedaled and became worse. And I start, it started encroaching onto my forehead. Yeah. So at a point I had like a thick crust of dandruff on my actual forehead. Wow. So like at this moment when what what because I I know that clearly there's physical pain mm -hmm. from it. it's like your skin is does what's the sensation like is it like your skin is burning or is it like a sore you know like when you get you cut like razor cuts and mm. there's sore what was the physical it's pain a mixture, like? it's a mixture of both mm. but I don't know which is worse the physical pain or the emotional pain if I'm honest mm. but like in terms of what it feels physically it's like it feels like you have a sore yeah and you can feel the sore yeah. So you can so that sometimes I'm actually lying down and I can actually feel my skin getting you know when your skin is dry yeah like it's taut yes that's mm. that's what it feels like and so and it's, it's like just, yeah it's like yes it's like it's mm, trying to stretch it stretch yes, yeah. yes that's what it feels like mm. and then it's itching yeah the emotional pain yes. let's talk about that side. the the emotional pain is the emotional pain is is different it's mm. um I I don't know that it's describable because yeah. you are looking at yourself and you cannot you cannot stand yourself. Mm. So it's that battle of, oh my God, is this me? It's like you're looking at the, I will never forget one time I took this, I think I, I now went through this place where I stopped looking at myself. I was going to ask, did you, did you, did you mm. still look at mirrors? It, I, I would look at mirrors, but I wouldn't see myself. So I would just look at mirrors to make sure I, oh, you know that look. Like, and like, then, like a flash, like, yes, oh, okay, um, I my head. Yes, mm. and go out. And because then I was now in school and you know how we are in Jan, yeah. you just wear your, your, your chucks, <laughs> your, your baggage, jeans. your jeans, your yeah. your mm. whatever, and you are off and everything. And then I was teaching and stuff. So I didn't even, and my school, luckily at the level I was studying, yeah. there were not many Nigerians. So I didn't have to worry mm. so much about makeup and everything. Yeah. So I think that just helped me not look at myself so much. Yeah. But I remember one day I had to take a passport photograph. So I went in and I took the passport photograph. And when the passport photograph came out, I never used that passport. Because I saw myself and I was shocked. Mm. I was like, oh my God, is that me? I'm sure white people would see you and they knew what it was. Mm. But a Nigerian person, what would be their reaction? You know, Nigerian people, it's funny. You know, you get the, auntie, I have something for your skin. <laughs> so you get those people that have, you know, that have no clue. Mm. And you get people that are like, oh, sorry, is this an allergy? And you get, I remember, yeah. I remember I forget one time in Nigeria, I used to go to this place to wax. Yeah. And I noticed that every time I went, they would keep me waiting for a really long time. Mm. So one day I sparked and I was like, what is the meaning of this? And they told me, they said, auntie, maybe we don't want to touch you because of your skin. Do you know, <laughs> I was incensed. I hit this. In fact, I was so angry. Mm. And I said, I said, may you never have something like this and someone speak to you in this way. Mm. I was so angry and I walked out and they were calling me. The lady called me, she's like, oh, she didn't mean it that way, all this yeah. and the other and everything. But, you know, you get things like that. You get the, uh, why aren't you? You know, after a while, I started mm. wearing skirts. Yeah. So you get the, why aren't you? I like to think it's why you met me, you started wearing skirts, by the way. Yeah, you, you like to think so. <laughs> yeah, I like yeah, to think so. Yeah, it's probably, it's probably, you probably are mm -hmm. a huge factor yes, yes. in that. Um, and then you say, you, yeah, you guess Nigerians is, um, I don't know. But, you know, it's difficult for me to talk about this now because... Yeah. I'm so over it. Yeah. So sometimes I don't see people's reactions oh, okay. anymore. Mm. So it's, it's something that is in the past. So I'm having to remind myself. Self, yeah. Because, I mean, now if I want to wear a skirt, I wear a skirt. I have mm. big, huge spots on my legs. But really, who cares? Yeah. Like, I, I really think that once you're done staring at my legs, mm. you get bored and yeah. you look at something else. That's how I feel. But what about, what about because I'm, I want to sort of go back mm -hmm. and thinking about guys and mm. being this 20-something-year-old, I mean... Sometimes, you know, teenage years kind of extend into young adulthood mm -hmm, mm -hmm. where you're still a little bit insecure about mm -hmm. how you look. Mm -hmm. And then you now wake up and you've woken up and you do not look like the person you used to mm -hmm, be. Mm -hmm. It's basically like you've just been given extra skin yes. that you mm -hmm. cannot get rid of. Mm -hmm. And how did he, and I'm sure there are people that thought maybe, oh, if they touch you, they will get, catch an infection. Mm -hmm. They can't use, you know, they don't want to touch your towel or touch mm -hmm. your stuff or sit oh, next to you. Yes. No, <laughs> I only have that problem with girls. Really? Guys, <laughs> guys, actually guys are, they are pretty cool. They don't. But did you ever think that they were? Yes, you, I, I, even till now. Were you ever now, paranoid about it? Even till now, that, that even till now, mm. if I'm going on a 
uh, on a date, yeah. especially a blind date. Yeah. I never know when to, what to what wear. Because okay. I never know when to, when to introduce this guy mm. into my sporty nature. I remember one time a friend mm. set me up with this guy on a date. And yeah. So I wore leggings the first time. And then I was like, what am I going to... I was like, because I felt I was cheating him. Yeah. Because I felt like this is a big reveal. <laughs> and you know, at what point do I let him know, no. you know? Because on your face, all he thinks is probably like, it's yes. just a rash or It's just a small just pimples. Spot, so it's pimples. Yeah. And how do you let him know that, no, this is 90% of me. Yeah. You know, 90% of my skin is covered in spots. So mm. how do I tell him? So, but then when I told him, he was like, oh, okay. 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 I mean, my, well, my ex-boyfriend was pretty... Pretty cool. Like he would even go online, research like mm. new drugs I could take and everything. Yeah. He had a friend in South Africa. He was trying to um, introduce me to so I could get some of my drugs cheaper because okay. they're quite expensive in Nigeria yeah. and things like that. So yeah, it's girls that I've always had the, uh, you know, please, oh, I can't use her comb. I don't know this one that is on her hair. Mm -hmm. It's girl. You know how women if I'll are. Catch, I'll catch something. Mm, it's, it's women. I've never had problem with guys. Hmm. What's what's like? <laughs> touch touch you. What's like the worst thing though that somebody said to you? <sighs> What's the worst thing someone has? Well, what are some of the worst things? Because I don't oh, think it can be one worst thing. Worst thing. Yeah. I remember one time in school, um, when because I I had the one on my hair. I told yeah. her in school, and I slept on my bunkmate's bed. And the next morning, she came and she sunned her mattress outside. You know, you know those kind of things. They, you know, people said, "Oh, I remember." Then we had in biology, we had just done fung, fung, fung fungus and bacterial yeah. lessons. Yeah. Everyone said I had a fungus because I was dirty and things <sighs> like that. You know, those so kind of things. Little, yeah. As they will say, crow crow. Mm, and then you know, people. I think some things that have hurt me is maybe when you know, like people that don't know any better that yeah. you believe should yeah. make some certain references to the fact of. The fact that you you because I have psoriasis, I'm, that's why I'm not married. Mm. You know mm. that that sting. Yeah, because you feel like you know you should know better. So they say things like, me. oh, they say things like, ah, if this thing, if this thing just come up for your body now, mm, you know, by now you'll oh, be yeah. married. Mm. You know things like that, and it because you don't know if it's true. Yeah, it kind of, it kind of, it can't, it, it kinda stays. It stays. It lingers. Like, uh, like it's not it's something that you can just brush yeah, up. Brush and because up. it's someone that is close to you. Yeah, you it it hurts. But a then. Bit more. You know, one of the weird things I notice about, like, you know, whether it's having, you know, a condition or mm. whatever it is, sometimes it's not only you coming to terms with it, but it's people around oh, you coming to geez. terms with it. It's my parents coming to terms with it. Mm. I don't think my parents have come to terms with it. Well, let's talk about your mom, your mom Hi, first. Oh, my mama. Hi, mama. <laughs> <laughs> My mama, my, my, my mom is absolutely wonderful. And I think uh, as a mother, she's probably yeah. more worried than me. Yeah. And, you know, probably even blames herself in mm. some weird way. Yeah. I know I forget, you know, and then people, because my mom is a, she wants to try everything. God bless yeah. her heart. So, you know, I remember one time somebody told her about this uh, leaf or something mm. that they sell in the market. Was that it not that wonder leaf you were telling me about? Oh, Jesus. So we went, this is how we went to Tejo Show, inside the market, inside the market. Are you serious? This woman was now telling me, she said, when she saw me, she said, ah, this one, hey, I will just make something for you in two weeks. It will come out from like it's from your stomach. Uh -uh. It will come out, come out, come out, come out, come out. You will now be shitting, 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 shitting. Then your skin will clear. Uh -uh. No problem. She just started to bring out all the leaves. My mom was like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. As if I do you wish that Wait, 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 pause, 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 <laughs> second. But the fact is that you know that that thing is not going to work. But what makes you decide out? Do you know what I'm going to go? Is it just it's to feel all righteousness? It's, it's my, for my mom because okay. she feels like I'm not trying. Mm. You know, I, I, I came to my own place of acceptance yeah. before I moved back to Nigeria where okay. I broke down. My dad was saying, because my dad's a medical doctor, and he said maybe this is something called onchocerciasis, mm. which is like a worm. Okay. And so I went to the School of Tropical Medicine in mm. London, and they did a series of tests. And the doctor said, no, this is psoriasis. Yeah. And I broke down, and I was crying there. And, and they told you there was no cure. They told me there was no cure. And, this was, and I think after I finished crying for like an hour, they, mm. they, the doctor left his patient. They came out, and they had a chat with me and all of that. And I said to myself, I said, I'm done. Mm. I'm done with looking for medicines. I, I, you know, I came to my peace. I said, this mm. is who I am, and I'm going to deal with it, you know? But my parents have not, unfortunately, have well, not well, But what was, what was the, because I know that you said, at some point you told me that they recommended some treatment that you, ref you refused. Was it steroids or what was it exactly? No, not that I refused. It was oh. um, phototherapy. Okay. So I had done the phototherapy thing and my skin got severely burnt. Wow. Yeah. It got severely, severely burnt and psoriasis got worse. 
Whew. So now when other dermatologists that I see say, oh, you should try for the other, I refuse because I'm like, mm. look, and they're like, no, we'll know how, we will we, we'll watch you. We'll. I'm mm. like, no. So for what is phototherapy? <sighs> what is phototherapy? Phototherapy is a type of treatment for psoriasis where mm. you use, I think it's UV rays. Okay. Because um, it's kind of like going into like a sunbed. Yes, exactly. That's what it is. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Is, what is so supposed to like? fry the cells or something no because it's um i think it's source of vitamin d okay and um also because the more sunlight exposure you get for mm -hmm. psoriasis it helps okay. the skin so they actually tell you uh, most people with psoriasis yeah. to you know sunbathe more and okay. all of that and everything do you yeah. do that i think there's enough sun in nigeria <laughs> don't, need to, don't need to wear a bikini <laughs> and lie down in, in barbage i think it's all right so, so, so you say you said you got burnt so tell me what happened I, you know, I really don't know because when you enter the thing, mm. you're standing, okay, um, and then you wear goggles. Goggles, okay. So it's literally like a like a sunroom. Yes, yeah, yeah. And I don't know. I, I was just getting darker and darker and darker. Mm. And then one day, my skin just started. To, I started having those rashes again, okay. and the skin got really, really bad. And then I now realize. I looked at myself in the mirror and I realized that I actually all of here was yellow mm. and everything else so you was were burnt it was like a proper hair. sunburn. Yeah. So they told me I went to see the dermatologist and said, "Don't, don't do it again." Mm. Wow. And I didn't even get any gain mm. from the therapy. Do you understand? So it wasn't yeah. that like, oh, I started seeing an improvement and that happened. There was no change. So basically what it is, psoriasis is a situation, everybody sell, everybody's skin sheds. Yeah. But something happens with someone with psoriasis where your skin multiplies faster mm. or your cells multiply faster than a normal person's own. So instead of shedding skin once every 28 days, you're mm. shedding three times a day. Oh wow! Okay. So it's the excess skin that comes on top, and but it doesn't each other. shed basi doesn't, basically. Yeah, so it just forms so it's on, not, top, yeah, okay. on top of each other. So the, the medicines help to reduce the cell multiplication process. Mm. That's so is the it? Best it's, so experience. it's basically an it's an autoimmune yes exactly. um, disease. Exactly. And they don't ever tell you what causes it. They say because I know I know when I read online it's like it was stress. No, I know stress is mm. a is a trigger. Yeah. So there are different triggers. Okay. So stress is a trigger. Um, some people say um, certain types of foods are okay. triggers, um, but mostly people say it's um, hereditary. Now, I know you recently tried the, um, the what diet, what was the diet? The gluten-free gluten diet. Gluten-free diet. I lasted all of 30-something days. I'm actually, <laughs> I'm actually quite proud. We're so proud of you. I'm proud. So, Gary wasn't eating, by the way, she wasn't eating, um, no, gluten-free, literally. I wasn't eating anything. No, you wasn't eating anything. All I was eating was chicken. Chicken, really. yeah, that, that was, was it. Was chicken. No red meat, no, red no rice, no bread. No, no cream, and no then it was ice cream also and cake. Which it wasn't really just gluten free; it was also lactose free as yes, well. Yes, exactly. So, so no, you should no eat vegetables, fruits, mm -hmm. lots of smoothies. Yeah, that's what it was. So no sugar, no sugar, no, no processed sugars. Rather. Yeah, yeah. I lasted thirty something days. I lost four kg in thirty something days. Yeah, which was not bad. Um, mm. I'm trying to start it again, really. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've been starting. I do two days, and but it didn't really help. If I'm no, honest, it didn't. It didn't help. really. It, it didn't, didn't really, really do anything. It didn't, it didn't really do much. It didn't so have you? Much. It has there been anything that you do that actually does help? I don't know, you know. Sometimes, I, I know that there are things I do that make it worse. Okay, like what? Um, like when I'm on my period. Mm. It's really, really bad. I know that stress. Mm. Um, in February, I had a really difficult time at work um, in terms of just workload. And I was doing a lot of presentations and everything. And my skin, literally, I couldn't sleep because my skin was hurting. Mm. Because I could feel it. The, it was so dry. Yeah. I remember I called you and I said, ah, please, I need my cream, my, cream concoction. Cook, my concoction, sharp, sharp, <laughs> you know. Um, so I know that those, yeah. those things make it bad. And I, I, yeah, I think those are the two main things. Because I actually don't, I, at first I thought weight made it bad, but I've been mm. slimmer yeah. than this and I've been bigger than this. Mm. And it's been the same. Now, I remember you, you said to me, you said that, oh, um, before you came back to Nigeria, you felt like you had already accepted it, like that, yes. that breakdown mm. in the... Mm. But then us. I know that when I met you, mm -hmm. there are these moments where you'd be like, you know, I remember one day you were really, you were itching so bad. Mm -hmm. And you were just like, psoriasis, you just said, I think you just blurted out, psoriasis is just a bad thing. This is <laughs> a bad thing. You know, I, I was like, my God, like, it you is. know. And then you have, I, I know that you've had moments where it's like, it's like literally like you want to tear your scalp out. And then there was a moment of depression again mm -hmm. as well. Yeah, so I, do you, do you, do you, do you really think you've kind of come to terms with it? Or do you think, because I think sometimes uh, I do feel that coming to terms with things, doesn't mean that you're not going to feel the pain course, or the hurts. Of course. Of so, course. but do you genuinely think that you've come to terms with it? I think I've come to terms with it. Mm. Um, but the, in terms of accepting it, yeah. accepting that 
this is what it is. Yeah. There is no cure for it. Yeah. So I'm not running pillar to post, okay. looking for different concussions and mm. all of that. So in terms of that level of acceptance, acceptance yes yeah, okay i'm uh, looking at myself in the mirror and seeing who i am and not bursting into tears yeah i've accepted that part but then sometimes especially when it gets really bad it's difficult because mm. there are days i come back from work and i just itch you know because mm. i've had a hard day and everything and then you know i'm peeling my skin mm. and all of that so those kind of things are it's 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 difficult mm. it's difficult so yes i will have those moments when i just think oh when i'm slapping my hair or when I go into a salon <laughs> in fact I don't do weaves anymore I'll never forget the last time I did a weave and they took off the weave and you could see my scalp was white cake white so it was like layers and layers, layers of and of crusty dandruff wow and this lady said to me you know you should treat your scalp hey you know what? you just want to slap some people because they're like <laughs> you know, because you look at her and you think lady get out of here like you don't even know me. You don't mm. know what I'm going through, yeah. all of that. Anyways, my, my this lady that does my hair mm. said to me, she just said, ah, let's even leave this weaves alone because it's mm. clear your scalp isn't getting yeah. air. So, yeah. So, I stopped. So, I haven't done weaves in mm. a while. In fact, I've, I made all my my weaves into a wig. Mm. So, the day I feel like being long and glamorous, I just, just put a wig on and call it a day.